This is part 59 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to issue a POST request using jQuery and the difference between GET and POST requests. This is continuation to part 58, so please watch part 58 before proceeding. To issue a GET request, we use the jQuery GET function. jQuery LOAD function can be used to issue either a GET or POST request depending on whether the data parameter is specified or not. If the data parameter is specified, a POST request is issued, otherwise a GET request is issued. Another method that is available in jQuery to issue a POST request is POST method. And here we have the syntax for POST method. Notice the parameters of this function are similar to GET function. In our previous video session, we discussed an example of using GET function. I have this page already running and I also have the Fiddler tool running. Now, when any of these text boxes receives focus, we are issuing a GET request. And along with the GET request, we are also sending data to the server. And what data are we sending to the server here? We are sending the key for which we want the help text. Let's go ahead and inspect this request in Fiddler. So here we have the request. And look at the request header. We are issuing a GET request. Since we are issuing a GET request and since we are also sending data to the server, the data will be appended to the URL. So notice the URL here, get help text .aspx, question mark, help text key equals first name. Now, if we want to issue a POST request instead of GET, then instead of using GET function, use the POST function. And if you look at this POST function, notice the parameters. They are very similar to GET function. The first parameter is the URL, the URL to which we want to send the request. The second parameter is data, the data that we want to send to the server. Third parameter is callback function, the function that gets called when the request completes. And the last parameter is the type of data that we are expecting from the server. In this case, we are expecting XML data. So let's go ahead and save these changes. Let's reload this page. And now when any of these text boxes receives focus, they issue a POST request. The behavior should be exactly the same, except that the request type now is a POST request. Let's go ahead and inspect this last request in Fiddler. So here we have the last request. Look at the request header, it's a POST request. And even with this POST request, we are sending data to the server, the same data, the key for which we want the help text. But notice the URL right here. The data that we are sending to the server is not part of the URL. So where is that data present then? It's present in the message body. And if you want to see that, click on this text view tab. And look at this, help text key equals first name. So if you are making a GET request and sending data to the server, the data will be part of the URL. If you are making a POST request and sending data to the server, the data will be part of the message body. So to issue a GET request, use the GET function, and to issue a POST request, use the POST function. So what is the difference between GET and POST requests? There are several differences. In general, GET is designed for getting data from the server, whereas POST is designed for modifying data on the server. Both GET and POST can be used to send data to the server. When you are sending data with a GET request, the data is appended to the URL as query strings. With POST request, the data is included in the message body. There is a limit on how much data can be sent using a GET request because there is a limit on the length of data that can be passed as part of the URL. The size limitations associated with GET are different depending on the client and server software. So if you are sending large amounts of data, then use POST over GET. If it's just a small amount of data, then you may use GET. But in general, a GET request should have no side effects in the sense that it shouldn't modify data on the server. Usually, if we are using a GET request to send data to the server, it should be to retrieve an item with a specific ID. For example, if we have a URL like this, get customer.aspx question mark ID equals one, you know, we are sending ID equals one to the server and it's a GET request. Basically, we would do that to retrieve customer with ID equals one. In this case, you know, we are issuing a GET request, right? And we are sending the key for which we want data to the server. 
Similarly, if you have a page like getCustomer.aspx question mark ID equals 102, then you are sending that ID equals 102 to the server to retrieve a customer with ID equals 102. Okay, so in general, you know, get is designed for getting data from the server, whereas post is designed for modifying data on the server, that is to perform inserts, updates, and deletes. A lot of people keep asking, what is the difference between get and post in Ajax? Whether you make get and post request using Ajax or by some other means is irrelevant. The differences are still the same between get and post. Thank you for listening and have a great day.